Okay, so now we're actually going to find out how you do an inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. And unsurprisingly, an inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix is a lot easier than the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. Um, and it's that idea of being able to kind of take you back to the original one. So I've said here that we earlier saw that the inverse of a matrix, um, M, which is usually just written M minus 1, meaning the inverse, it undoes the effect of the matrix. Therefore, the matrix multiplied by the inverse of the matrix, which is the same as the inverse of the matrix multiplied by the original matrix, is just equal to the identity. So if you take a matrix and you multiply it by its inverse, you just go back to the identity. And what I've written here, multiplying something by a matrix followed by its inverse has no overall effect i.e. the same as the identity matrix. So if you, I don't know, took the, the matrix A, you multiplied it by something to transform it to a new point, you multiplied it by its inverse, that would take it back to its original point. So that's just the same thing as taking the original matrix A and multiplying it by the identity. There'd just be no change at all. And um, a little side note here is that kind of obviously, whoops, um, if a matrix is self-inverse, if a matrix is self-inverse, then we could say that, uh, let's call it A, then A would be a equal, equal to A inverse, which also means that A multiplied by A inverse would be equal to the identity. But because they're equal to each other, we could therefore say that A multiplied by A is equal to the identity. In other words, if you square the matrix, you get the identity matrix. I wanted to talk about these self-inverse matrices right here with this property, uh, because there is an exam question. So if you're doing any mock exams, it's kind of worth knowing that if they talk about a matrix being self-inverse, it must be equal to its inverse, which means this is true, which means this is true, which ultimately means this thing here is true. Kind of all follows on from logic as well. So in this orange box we've got here, we're actually talking about how you find the inverse of a matrix. So if the two by two matrix A is written A, B, C, D, then the inverse of the matrix is found by doing one divided by the determinant of the matrix. And then you take the A and D values and you swap them over. So it goes DA instead of AD. And you take the B and C ones and you leave them where they are, but you just negate them. So if they're positive, they become negative, And if they're negative, they become positive. I've also written that A minus one is the inverse of A. So if you did a matrix multiplied by X was equal to Y, well then if you did the inverse matrix multiplied by Y, you should get X. So if you're not sure what that means, just kind of think carefully about how if you applied the inverse on this side, you should end up with the original, matrix, uh, the original thing X. And also this thing that we've got written down here, that A multiplied by A inverse is A inverse multiplied by A, which is equal to the identity matrix. And I probably would add to this one that this whole point that we've got here, that if a matrix is self-inverse, then all of these facts here are also true. So let's actually just have a bit of a practice of finding the inverse of some of these matrices that we've got here. So to find the inverse of this matrix that we've got here. The first step is to divide by the determinant. So the determinant of this is just two times two minus zero. So that's just a quarter. And then we swap the northwest and southeast elements. So this is the northwest and the southeast. Well, when you swap those over, nothing happens. And then you negate these ones that we've got here and also there nothing is going to happen. So you could leave it in this form if you wanted to, or you could multiply everything inside by a quarter. So you just get a half, zero, zero, a half. So this is the answer to the inverse of this matrix. Well, let's try another one. This time we're gonna do the same things. So I'm gonna do the determinant first of all. The determinant is going to be four minus six, and four minus six is minus two. I'm going to swap the diagonals, the leading diagonals, so it becomes 4 and 1, and I'm going to negate these, so I get minus 3, minus 2, and I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I could then deal with this minus that we've got down here by making everything inside flip, so it becomes minus 4, 2, 3, minus 1, and if I wanted to put the half inside, I could do, so I would get minus 2, 1, 3 over 2, minus a half. So this here is the inverse of this matrix. You can, of course, compute the inverse on your calculator. And this one's actually really, really easy to type in. You literally are just going to type in the two by two matrix. So what's that? Seven, two, one, minus three. Let's go back to my calculator. So let's go to math 
matrix two by two, seven, two, one, minus three, and you can literally just do it. Oh, it's kind of fading in and out. Let me just quickly lock that on. And you can literally just do to the power of using the to the power of button minus one, and it will just do the inverse for you. So you get three, two, one, and minus seven all over 23. Three, two, one, and minus seven all over 23. So that's three, two, one, and minus seven all over 23. Or you could write it as three over 22, three over 23, two over 23, one over 23, and minus seven over 23. You can see where that 23 has come from because that's minus 21, uh, minus uh, two, which gives you the minus 23. And all of that kind of stuff's happened in here. We can see if there's been some switchings and things like that. So you can use the calculator to find inverses if it's numerical. It then says, for what value of P is this singular? Given that P is not this value, find the inverse. So remember, singular means that the determinant of the matrix is going to be equal to zero. So we could say that the determinant of four, P plus two, minus one, three minus P is equal to zero. So it's gonna be four times this minus this times this. I think we did this question earlier on actually. So this is gonna be a bit silly. So that's got to be equal to zero. Yep, we did do this one earlier on. So it's 12 minus four P plus P plus two equals zero. So 14 equals two, three P. And so P is equal to 14 over three. So that is when it is non-singular. This says given P is, sorry, that is when it is singular because the determinant is equal to zero. But now they've told us it is not equal to that. So the determinant is actually this thing here, right? This is the determinant of the matrix. And we simplified it down to this stage. So we could say the determinant of four, P plus two, minus one, three minus P is equal to, looking at this second yellow line that I've got here, 14, minus 3p. So if I'm going to write down the inverse of this matrix, I can do so, it's just going to look pretty unpleasant. It's just going to be 1 over 14 minus 3p. I'm going to swap these elements and then negate these. So it's going to be 3 minus p over here, 4 down here, negate this, and then minus p minus 2 up here. So although it doesn't look very pleasant, that is the inverse of that 2 by 2 matrix that we've got there, okay? On the next video, I'm going to do some proofs with these. Hopefully so far, you're just finding that matrices are pretty much like follow this thing and you should end up with the answer. Okay, here we go.